The orange cones are gone from East Central Avenue, and that's a good thing for all travelers. It signals the opening of north and south lanes of I-75, that crossover lane that's taken almost a week to construct is now ready and southbound traffic through Campbell County is able to remain on I-75 rather than taking a detour route through La Folle. Just after dark last night is when one southbound lane opened. So now there are two lanes heading north and one lane for those driving south. That's only for a short stretch of interstate, though. This all began last week when TDOT crews discovered that a big chunk of earth collapsed beneath part of 75 near mile marker 143. That prompted workers to close one lane yesterday or last Thursday before closing both lanes on that south side last Friday after a large crack developed in the middle of the lanes along the dotted white lines. The switch to one lane on the south side begins near mile marker 144, the Stinkin' Creek exit, and runs to near mile marker 297 from Jellicoe through Elk Valley for their detour. Mark Nagai with TDOT tells WLAF and Channel 12 that extra travel time is needed no matter how you travel south through Campbell County and to expect a bottleneck where south lanes narrow to one lane on I-75. The Campbell County Cougars are now 2-0. Coach Brad's Cougar baseballers battled back after giving up four runs in the first inning to defeat Lenore City 11-7 Wednesday evening at Brown Archer Field. The orange and blue was supposed to travel to Williamsburg today for a 5 p.m. game with the Yellow Jackets, but the game is actually being played at Campbell High. Listen for the Cougars game with afternoon with Anderson County. That will come up Monday afternoon at 6 o'clock, and you can listen over 1450 WLAF Radio and 1450WLAF.com. Tonight is meals in a pinch night. Beginning at 6 o'clock, members of the Jellicoe Highway Church of God provide a complete meal in a box while supplies last. The church is about 10 minutes north of La Follette on Highway 25W. Look for the church on the right. Friday is Commodity Day in La Follette. They'll be handed out beginning at 8.30 a.m. at the La Follette Community Center, formerly West La Follette School. It's on a first-come, first-served basis. Please bring a box and help to carry your food. Community Health of East Tennessee, CHET, invites all local churches and faith-based groups for a special tour of the new community health care facility this Saturday from 2 to 5. The new facility is behind the La Follette CVS. You are invited to join the Chet Board of Directors to view the facility and learn more about the primary health care services it provides here in Campbell County. And Governor Bill Haslam is calling on Tennesseans to confront the state's obesity epidemic. Haslam says his new health and wellness task force has identified the problem as its top priority. According to the American Health Rankings, nearly 30% of K-12 student children are overweight or obese. Pediatrician Dr. Bill Sears says that parents should use a real simple policy of serving real foods. He goes on to say that portion sizes are also key to the problem. You can read more about the task force on the governor's website at www.10.gov slash governor. And that's our news for this Thursday. Stay tuned next. We'll be back with a press release from the Sheriff's Department. And it's time now to check the report from the past 24 hours from the Campbell County Sheriff's Department. There are 11 names on our report today. 
Hannah Deshay Beatty, 23, of Park Road, Caraville, for theft of property between $1,000 and $9,999. 19-year-old Scarlett Lauren Bowman of Rose Hill Drive, La Follette, for theft of property under $500, public intoxication, destruction of evidence, and introduction of contraband into a penal institution. Edia A. Braden, Jr., 44, of Oak Grove Road in Lake City, entered the jail to serve court-imposed time. 27-year-old Patrick L. Brink of Chestnut Circle in La Follette for possession of drug paraphernalia. 18-year-old Corey Lee Scott Hinkle of White Oak Road in Duff was picked up and held for Indiana. Leonard Ray Huckabee, 32, of Landmark Road in Jacksboro, on an attachment for child support and 120 days to serve. 26-year-old Nancy Annette Hurst of Kyle Street, La Follette, second charge of violation of probation. John Ross Marlowe, 29, of Demery Road, La Follette, for aggravated burglary and theft over $1,000. 34-year-old Leanna Marie Mongar of South Cumberland Avenue, La Follette, for theft of property under $500. James Tyler Tomlin, 18, of Steiner Lane, La Follette, for failure to exercise due care, violation of the registration law, and no license. And 23-year-old Brittany Leanne Weimer of Corrington, for violation of of probation. And that wraps up our portion of the news today. We've got more coming your way, so stay with us and join us again tomorrow. Good Thursday, everybody. Welcome into your birthdays and anniversaries. That's brought to you by East Side Pizza and Deli and WLAF. Celebrating a birthday today, David Watson turned 51 today. Ned Russell also celebrating a birthday. And Miss Brenda Ratcliffe turned 62 years young today. So happy birthday to all of you from all the staff here at WLAF. Got no anniversaries for today. So if your birthday or anniversary are coming up this week, you need to get it in here to me before early tomorrow morning. That's when we'll be having your drawing for two free dinners from Eastside Pizza and Deli. And you can qualify for that by calling me at 562-1450, 566-1450, 562-3557. Or you can email it to WLAF at BellSouth.net or you can fax it in to 562-5764. That does for our birthdays and anniversaries for today. So we'll see you back here tomorrow for the end of the week edition of Birthdays and Anniversaries. Stay tuned. Your news continues.